Well, boys, here it is. Much anticipated M18 fuel metal cutting circular saw. This is product number 2982-20. It is the Bear Tool M18. Let's look at the box and then we'll get into it. Cuts up to 120 foot of decking per charge. Yeah, okay. Depends on what battery you use. Blade specification, eight inches. Blade cutting capacity, two and nine sixteenths. Now that does not mean it can cut two and nine sixteenths inches of material. That means that it can cut two and nine sixteenths inches of depth. Uh, let's see, RPMs, it turns at 4,000. So it's a little faster than the, uh, the plug-in model that this is a, a cousin of. 5 8 Arbor, it's got a chip collector. It's got an mm. overload indicator light. Uh, it's mm. got an electric okay. blade brake, so when you let go, it turns off and uh, it weighs 12 pounds. Here it compares itself to a 15 amp corded, and it, it actually is comparing itself to itself, to in other words, this tool to the Milwaukee tool, and it's saying they have equal power. It's saying that it cuts faster than its competitor saws that are nine inches. Uh, 120 foot of decking, that's the steel decking that you use to pour concrete on to build like a skyscraper. It says here that it's a brushless motor, that's super cool. Red link technology, so it, it measures the load the tool is asking for based on the work you're trying to get out of it. The amperage the battery's putting out, and it tweaks everything to give you the best work it can. And if it gets overloaded, it stops. Uh, that is an excellent feature because I can tell you just regular brushed 15 amp tools will burn themselves up. Okay, that's enough looking at the box. Let's get in this thing. The book. Let's thumb through here real quick, see if there's anything interesting. One inch thick steel plate, that's a big deal. What this is basically telling you is this thing has a thicker cutting capacity in the book than any other saw on the market. Now, I can tell you other people are cutting one inch thick plate with these other saws and they're working just fine. But it doesn't say you can do it in the book. This one says you can do it in the book. Now they do tell you how to use the saw here. So what it tells you here is you don't want more than a quarter inch of blade sticking out below the material being cut. That's important for tool life, for blade life, and for safety. So kind of for perspective, here's the tool in front of the box it comes in. It definitely just fits in that box. And this is a large instrument. So let's get the box out of the way and let's have a closer look at the tool. It's got that overload light right there. Comes with the Allen key to change the blade there. It's got a lock for the trigger here. Here's the, the arbor lock here. So when, when you're changing the blade, you'll turn it till this thing locks in and that'll hold the, hold the motor side of the thing still so you can unscrew the blade. It's got the latch here for the chip. So that pops there. And then this whole thing lifts off like a caddy. And in it, the chips will pour out of here. They pour into here, and then, you know, when you want to dump it, it'll pour out. It's also got an indicator here to show you that you're getting full of chips. Uh, you got your bearings in here, so this is the spindle off the motor. There's a bearing. It's all grease packed in here. If you push this saw pretty hard, just like any other tool you push hard, this bearing might need some maintenance. It's very, very easy to maintain from here. I can tell you also that the brushed versions of these do an excellent job of protecting the motor from chips. Uh, in a previous video that I'll link right up here, I reviewed the Evolution Power Tool saw. And though it was nowhere near as substantial as this saw with regard to size or power or reported capacity, it wasn't a bad saw, except that it was accused of being a multi-material saw and when you cut metal with it, it got chips inside of itself and basically it killed itself by eating metal shavings. So this saw should be far better in that regard. So this thing goes here, this goes there. 
and you're off to the races again. Now, one thing I will complain about is a known problem with these saws, and that is these spot welds here. These are known to give out and cause this thing to break off. Then, you, you know, your shoes not working for you anymore. I will tell you, it's a pretty basic thing. People generally, when they're buying a saw like this, know how to weld and they'll just weld it back on and they're back, back to work. One thing you may want to consider if you choose to buy one of these saws is to go ahead and get ahead of that. And uh, if you can TIG weld, TIG your little bead across there and call it a day. The front is also a problem. It's, it's a... Uh, it's actually where, where it breaks the most is up here at this front pivot. And honestly, the reason it breaks is because the saw is heavy. And what people do is kind of drop it on the ground like that. And after a few months of doing stuff like that, the, the thing gives away. Another thing you're seeing right here, this lever here. So I'm gonna push that lever. So that pulls your guard out of the way so you can make a plunge cut. And the nice thing about it is, is it is on the handle. So you're not reaching over here on the side of the saw for some lever to pull around. It's actuated from way up here on top of the saw, so you're in a very safe place to move that out of the way to make a plunge cut. We've talked about it. Let's put battery on it and see what it does. So I've got a fresh off the charger 5.0. And contact. So that electric brake works well. All right, let's get a blade on this thing and do some cutting. And they do send it with a medium thickness blade. Now this blade is recommended, it's a 42 tooth blade and it's recommended for an eighth to a half an inch thick. And the, the nut, the arbor nut is also hexed on the exterior. So if you lose the Allen key, you can use a crescent wrench or whatever you have around. So now let's spin it and see that brake function without the chip going. And I can tell you that electric brake is so strong, you may have seen it pull the saw. And uh, I'm not a little boy, so it's pulling pretty good. So it definitely wants to stop. There's a piece of 3 8 scrap that's been on my table just forever. Okay, guys, I've got my line marked out. I've got my... PPE on, full face shield, gloves, and hearing protection. I've got my blade depth set on the saw. And what I'm gonna do, just so you guys can see this cut from both sides, uh, see the tool work from both sides, is I'm gonna cut in from one side and then I'm gonna reset up and cut the rest of the way from the other. Okay, so this is very, very interesting. Uh, this thing, this overload light, as soon as you're getting into trouble, this thing lights up. Really, I need a saw guide along the side of it here to uh, get the best cut. So I'm gonna move my clamp and we'll finish it off from the other side. Now I have this shot set up so you can see this overload light and you'll watch as it, when I'm pushing too hard, how it'll let me know it. Oh, and hey, this is interesting. So I am in the metal right there. So I am in between teeth and watch when I hit the saw. See, it tries to spin and it turns off. It doesn't let me hurt it. So it gives it a chance and it just shuts it off. 
and doesn't hurt the saw at all. That's just all part of the Red Link technology. And what's nice about that is, is the regular corded saw, it would try to go and would actually burn itself up if you let it. So very, very nice. Again, I didn't have the best setup as far as a saw guide. At one point, I tried to push it a little sideways and make it overload. I don't know if it did or showed up in the video. Where I was standing, I actually could not see the overload light. So let's look at our cut quality. This is like glass through here. One little burr there, that's it. Uh, no burrs over here at all. Uh, that is, that's weld ready. I mean, it's actually mirror finish mostly. Look at that. I mean, that's knife edge as far as trimming ability. You can really, really take off a small piece of material. Now that shows you more of the cut there, a little different angle. Good looking cut. The saw does have adequate power. It uh, does let you push it a little bit. It is designed again with that red link technology to not be uh, self-destructive. That's about the 20 inch cut we made and we came in from both sides and I'm using a 5-0 battery, so I'm going to take it off the tool and let's see what our battery looks like. So we still got three bars. I mean, I figured with a motor the size of this thing uh, that it would suck some juice, and I can tell you this battery is warm. You would probably want a 9-0 battery. The biggest I have is a 5-0. Somebody will hear that and think, oh, if you had a 9-0 battery, that saw would cut even better. No, that is not how it works. That 5 -0 and that 9 -0 is amp hours. Amp hours. See there? AH. Now, I can talk for an hour on what amp hours means, but Google, what is amp hours? And that will help you out. It, this does not put out, this is an 18 volt battery. A 9 -0 is an 18 volt battery. They put out the same voltage, which means they put out the same current. A 9 -0 puts out that current for longer than a 5 -0. So a 9 -0 battery has a bigger gas tank. It doesn't have a bigger supercharger. If that doesn't make sense to you, I don't know what to tell you. Now, as far as chip management goes, no saw is perfect. As you can see, there's plenty of, plenty of metal here. And on the floor, there's plenty of metal. Uh, that floor was clean. But I will tell you, it does not spit any chips at you. And that is important. A lot of these types of saws, you'll get trash all flying at you, flying into the motor of the saw. Uh, none of that happens with this M18. And as far as how much chips it actually collects, this is just the styrofoam that it was packaged in. So looky there, look at all that. And then again, when you look at the floor and the table, I'd venture to say the chip collecting mechanism gets 90 to 95% of the chips you make. So that's pretty dang good. Let's see, what else can I tell you? I don't know, let's put that same 5-0 battery back on and make one continuous cut. Everything is set up as it should be. And I have now, I'm using that piece that I cut off as a saw guide. So now I'll run that same cut again and I'm gonna run it continuously. From here, hopefully you'll be able to see both of the cut and the overload light, and you'll be able to see if I overload this thing. And we'll see where our battery's at at the end of this cut.
Battery overheat. So I'm going to get a second 5 0 and we'll go to work. So, fairly cool to the touch. It's not cold. I mean, there's some heat there. Good, shiny, clean cut. As far as that battery, that second battery, it already took it down to three. So this thing sucks some juice for sure. It'll definitely make you want some 90 batteries. So we cut through 25 inches of 3 8 plate and needed to change that 5 0 battery out after just that 25 inches. Now, 25 inches is a pretty good cut. You know, I mean, that's a, that's a lot of work and not having to run the extension cord saves me just so much time. And that's, that's basically the bottom line of who this saw is right for. If you not having to run an extension cord is valuable to you, is precious to you, then this is the right saw for you. If you don't mind running that extension cord, get the corded version of this thing. Okay, this is interesting. I wanna, I wanna show you this. This is that battery. It did not drain the battery. It overheated the battery. So this battery just spent a minute on the charger and it kind of reset itself. So it just needed to cool off. I'm gonna keep this battery. And this is the one we made that last cut with and it's still at three. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just kinda of keep these two batteries and keep them in rotation and start making some cuts. Seeing that it did not completely suck this thing dry in 25 inches of 3 eighths makes me very, very happy. If it's just an issue of the batteries are going to get hot, well, we can fix for that. We can just have two batteries and kinda of switch them out after every cut. But uh, let's get to work on some cutting. So this is eighth inch wall one by two. This is quarter inch wall, two by three. And 
I have not yet changed this battery. So this battery so far has made one cut through this 3 8 plate, and then it has made the eighth inch wall one by two cut and the quarter inch wall two by three cut. And that battery is at three bar. Still, so it kind of sucked it down right at first, but uh, this battery is chooching along. I don't know guys, I'm impressed here. Uh, it does overheat on long cuts with the uh, smaller batteries. If you're gonna make long cuts, you definitely want a bigger battery. But uh, man, these five O's for what I work with, uh, it's gonna get it. Uh, let, let, let's upgrade one more time. Six inch I-beam, quarter inch web. So, just some scrap I had laying around. But I'm gonna set us to a full depth cut. And we'll see what she does. And again, this is still that same 5 battery. Now I could definitely feel the saw working as I went through that web. I'm gonna back it up and I'll make a couple more cuts on the same beam. Same battery. Yeah. So same battery, and we're down to one bar now. It's probably time to go and change it out. So there's our two cuts in the I-beam, and it's down to one bar. So 5.0 battery, we got down to one bar. I don't know, boys. That's what it actually did. I guess we can make one more cut and see if the battery dies all the way. It did it. I will say you can feel the saw slowing down, not giving me the same power. And, and again, that's that Red Link Plus technology kind of pulling back on the motor so that it can survive the work. And you'll see that when you run like the grinder or whatever, that uh, the grinder is a really good example where you'll feel it, that the, it's just not putting out the same RPMs anymore. And that's because you're getting to the end of that battery. And as far as chip capacity, I mean, you saw it make all those cuts and you saw how many chips came out after that one cut in the 3 8 plate and our chip deals nowhere near full. Now, as far as what's on the ground and everywhere else, yeah, I mean, I got plenty of, plenty of sweeping to do here. You know, there's plenty of chips around to sweep up, but I can tell you relative to other saws, nowhere near as much work to be done. Uh, let's take the battery out and look at the blade. So look, just sitting there, that battery uh, kind of reset itself from a number one to a number two. So it'd probably make another cut now that it's not as hot. And after inspecting the blade, I can tell you there's no damage. Not a single tooth is rounded off. No appreciable bluing on the carbide. The amount of wear it's showing right now, I can tell you this eye beam, I could just shred it. Wouldn't have a single problem. If you're looking at this saw and you do decide to get one, one thing I'll warn you about, you see these little things right here? These little curl ups at the end? Those things are razor sharp. 
and will ruin your day if you get one in your Crocs. Ask me how I know. All right, boys. Hope this was a benefit to you to watch. $400 saw, that's no small purchase for anybody. I can tell you the Milwaukee warranty is really good. This particular tool comes with a five-year warranty. Rated for one inch plate, that's gonna be hard to break and it be not in warranty. Uh, I bought this from Ohio Power Tool and here's my invoice right there. Uh, you're looking at $424 shipped to West Texas. Don't only watch the tool videos, watch some of the uh, maker videos also. You know, I'm not buying this stuff just to throw in a corner. Everything I've got, I use from anvils to forges to belt grinders. Uh, it's all on the channel. Anyhow, check some of it out, see what you think. Thanks, guys.